So in this screencast, we're going to talk about one of the last concepts having to do with the last consequences of molecular structure, and that is dipole moment. So to sort of like wrap this all into a nice little box and bow, sort of want to show where overall dipole moment sort of like comes into play in terms of uh, previous knowledge. So in the beginning, when we started talking about structures, we started with our Lewis structure, and then once our Lewis structure was determined, then we could look at the number of groups of electrons and determine our electron domain geometry. Then from our electron domain geometry, comparing the number of bonds to the number of lone pairs, we could comp we could co figure out our molecular geometry. Out of the electron domain geometry also came our sort of initial bond angles, then with the lone pairs and such, sort of like tweak those bond angles, but ostensibly a bond angle was sort of our first indications came from the electron domain geometry. Now molecular geometry also has another consequence and that is the concept of overall dipole moment. We've talked about bond dipoles before where we have two atoms bonded together with differing electronegativities. The electrons in that bond are sort of going more towards the more electronegative element and that gives bond dipoles. Well now that we have a concept of overall structure, molecular geometry, we can talk about the overall dipole moment, which put very simply is the vector addition of bond dipoles. The vector addition of bond dipoles. That's all an overall dipole moment is. The resultant or overall dipole moment is the 3D addition of bond polarities giving rise to an overall polarity or lack thereof. Put another way, it is the vector addition of bond dipoles. Vector addition bond dipoles. Can be explained using three very simple examples. The first two are water and carbon dioxide. So here's our water molecule and I've left off the lone pairs but you know there's two lone pairs in there and we all know that the molecular geometry of water is bent and so this, we know this bond angle is about 104 and a half. So we have bond dipoles and the way we know we have bond dipoles is because we have a covalent bond between two elements that are different. Oxygen, hydrogen, different. There's a bond dipole here, there's a bond dipole here and it's pointing toward the more electronegative element. So and I've sort of drawn the structure such that the hydrogen, the oxygen, and the hydrogen are all in the same plane, the plane of the screen if you will. So a bond pole pull, pull, sort of pushing here and pushing here. Now vector addition means you're sort of breaking into components. So this bond dipole has a component sort of going straight this way and a component going straight up. This bond dipole has a component going straight this way and a component going straight up. The component of the dipole moment from this bond dipole is pointing 180 degrees to the horizontal component of this bond dipole and they're sort of pointing towards each other and they're canceling each other out because they're in opposite directions of the same magnitude. But the component of this bond dipole going up and the component of this bond dipole going up, again this is vector addition, doesn't cancel out and so what we end up getting is an overall dipole moment, sort of the summation of those two of going straight up through the middle of those lone pairs. Now the reason why this has a bond dipole moment is A, we have bond dipoles, but more importantly it is the angle and magnitude of those bond dipoles. So they don't cancel out. Now understand that at this level of the course, all I expect you to know is yes or no. Is there an overall dipole moment? It's all you have to be able to figure out. Yes or no overall dipole moment. So it's not it does not have to do with simply, oh, I've got two bonds, so there is a dipole moment. You actually have to think a little bit harder than that. So let's look at carbon dioxide. So here's our Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. Two bonds on this side, two bonds on this side. So the carbon has two groups of electrons around it. So it is a linear molecular geometry. Do we have bond dipoles? Of course we do, because carbon and oxygen are different. And so they have different electronegativity, so we have bond dipoles. Oxygen is more electronegative, oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So we have bond dipoles going in this direction. Now because the molecular geometry is linear, this bond angle is exactly, inextricably, 180 degrees. And the magnitude of these bond dipoles is exactly the same. 
because it's always an oxygen versus a carbon, oxygen versus a carbon. So you can almost think of this as a tug of war, that because it's 180 degrees, you got big strong guy over here, big strong guy over here, but they're the exact same strength. Their bond tables are exactly the same. So the net effect is a big fat nothing. So if we look at the angle, in this case linear, and the magnitude, same, they cancel each other out. So there's no overall dipole moment in this particular structure. What about OCS? Same, almost identical Lewis structure. Carbon, central carbon still has two groups of electrons around it, so it is a linear molecular geometry. And we have bond dipoles, but, and the bond angle is still exactly 180 degrees. However, however, the magnitude, they are exactly the same. Or they're not exactly the same. We have the sulfur and the oxygen are actually different. And so they are, they different, so they actually don't cancel each other out because their magnitude, their angle is canceling out, but their magnitude is not the same, so they don't cancel out. Now, here are just the three single examples, so you can sort of, and so, again, OCS has a overall dipole moment. And so you have to look at all the particular structures. It, it, it's not just these linear structures that would have no dipole moment. If I had a tetrahedral electron domain geometry or tetrahedral molecular geometry, so for example CH4, tetrahedral in geometry, the bond angles are exactly even, exactly 109 and a half, and you have bond dipoles, but they will exactly cancel each other out because of those bond angles. So now you should be able to determine whether or not you have an overall dipole moment. It all is tied down to look at the bond dipoles, angle, magnitude. Again, you don't have to be able to draw it. You just have to be able to tell me yes or no, there is an overall dipole moment.